fresh restart in Washington. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has met with U.S. President Joe Biden at the White House before she steps down from her long-held position this fall. President Biden raised his concerns over the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline, of course, which is uh, built between Russia and Germany. And U.S. has long claimed the project is a geopolitical maneuver by Russia that will undermine Ukraine's role in transiting energy to Europe. But Germany and Russia say the project is purely commercial. And despite the difference, Biden and Merkel agreed that Ukraine will remain a transit country for natural gas. And their discussions also covered curbing Russian influence, climate change and pandemic and Iran's nuclear issue as well. And Merkel is uh, the first European leader to visit the White House since Biden took office. The visit was widely seen as Biden's effort to restore the relationship between Washington and Berlin, which had been damaged by his predecessor, Donald Trump. For more on about this meeting, let's uh, talk to our current affairs commentator, Mr. Aina Tangan. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Aina. Well, the two sides, of course, talked about, about a lot of things. Uh, uh, the Nord uh, Stream 2, of course, is one of the most important issues. And on that amount, I don't quite understand U.S. attitudes toward that matter. So what was the U.S. plan by uh, stopping this project, by trying to stop this project? Is the U.S. going to supply gas for the European countries? Well, they would certainly like to. I mean, we, we do have a, a lot of natural gas. It would be a, a terrific market to have, and mm. basically uh, they would be dependent on us. So that increases our political uh, leverage over them. Mm. Uh, they point to the time that the, the Russians did cut off gas to certain areas of the uh, EU, and they're saying that, you know, this could happen again. But the fact is, you know, despite all the rhetoric that you heard, uh, you know, about positive and stand together. The reality is that Europe needs energy and mm -hmm. Russian gas is mm -hmm. the most efficient way mm -hmm. of, of doing, getting that. And it also needs trade, so it needs China. So mm -hmm. you have this real difference between mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, you know, people, the U.S. wants, their interest, and what the EU sees as there. And there's a trust deficit as well. Right, and uh, Merkel actually has worked through four U.S. presidencies. Um, there were friendship, there were tensions with the most dramatic relations uh, probably happening in the Trump <laughs> yeah. period. Yes, but still, uh, the, uh, some U.S. analysts believe that things that unite the two countries are greater than the things that divide those two countries. Do you agree? I would have if you'd asked me maybe eight to ten years ago. But today the reality is, as I said, you know, you start looking at German car makers and how much they make in China. How are they going to end that relationship or, uh, you know, take on China in that kind of state? So it would be against their interest. Mm -hmm. And the same with energy. Mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. may be, uh, you know, want to supply mm -hmm. natural gas, but it would be at a higher price mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, could be interrupted as well. Mm -hmm. So and they don't want that leverage. I mean, there's the trust deficit I was talking about is the EU wonders if Trump or somebody like Trump is going to be in the future in the Oval Office mm. and whether or not you will have a repeat That's of a what happened That's a big question mark. Mm. Well, it's a question mark and it's just you can't, uh, the reliability mm. of the United States when, you know, things like Afghanistan, so many issues out there, you know, unilateral tariffs against mm. friend and foe alike. Mm. Uh, these things have really tarnished uh, the reputation of the U.S., mm. and this is not something that can be undone. It'll take a long time mm. to reestablish that trust. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, something that uh, should be in the minds, not only in Merkel's minds, uh, in other national leaders' minds as well. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's not just in Europe, uh, Africa, mm -hmm. South America, uh, you know, obviously all the neighbors around uh, Afghanistan are wondering how it is that you break a country and then walk away. Mm -hmm. It might be a strategic victory to say that we're going to make, all, you know, all China, Russia and all these countries we don't like pay f for our mistakes. Mm -hmm. But long term, remember, the U.S. is at the pinnacle mm -hmm. of this established world order. Mm -hmm. If the world order collapses, mm -hmm the U.S. would suffer. Germany is going to have a new leader, and the uh, U.S. has already had a new leader. Uh, so where do you think uh, bilateral relations will be heading? Well, I Probably. mean, it, 
Well, uh, it, it, regardless of what people want to say, I mean, the economics and the need for power are going to remain the same. So if the Greens got in and they, they said that they wanted to make a statement on human rights, uh, if they do that, uh, if they try to pursue some sort of agenda against China based on these kind of false or misleading claims, uh, it won't go well for them on the trade side. So they're kind of blocked in. And this is where I'm saying that the U.S. and Europe have very, very different realities. And the question is, uh, in the U.S. mind, despite all of this rhetoric, there was not a real coming together on so many issues. So at this point, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not clear who will be in charge, but mm. whoever is, the reality remains the mm. same. Well, uh, each other's interests should be uh, respected and that might, should be the base of uh, any kind of re bilateral relations. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Uh, Anna Tangen, our current affairs commentator.